so welcome to the talk today uh, this is a series of uh, sessions that we are going to have where we are going to talk about uh, acute cases and how homeopathy can help so here um, we are going to have eight sessions and in every session i'm going to show you series of different set of remedies and a plan of how to treat uh, the current situation i have tried to create a map uh, of remedies that can help patients this is a map still i'm working on so i'm not uh, published it because it's still under work and the map goes in the following way the first is what i like to call as the mild cases they are initial uh, stage of cases <clears throat> and in this initial stage of cases and i am going to tell you in detail right now i am just introducing the idea to you so in initial stage of cases uh, the main remedies which would come would be uh, obviously belladonna aconite ferrumphos other remedies like gelsemium bryonia china rustox nakswamika he parcel in some cases pulsatilla epicac eupatorium perfoliata so <clears throat> roughly this 10 12 remedies are the set of remedies that are coming in the mild cases in the initial stage of cases i will be teaching you every remedy and how to use these remedies and what are the indications that are practically coming and how to help the next set of remedies is what we call as the moderate to severe cases this is the later stage where the pneumonia starts <clears throat> the remedies that come here are kalikarp phosphorus arsenic ammonium carb lycopodium antimony ars stannum metallicum in some cases bromium and finally uh, natrium sulf senega in old people and chelidonium so we did initially i told you about the mild or the uh, or the uh, first stage of cases first stage of remedies and then i told you about the stage where it's more moderate to severe and the set of remedies that come during that time <clears throat> and then we talk about emergency cases where sometimes we have to admit the patients or patients are in hospital or on oxygen support and what can be the homeopathic remedies here <clears throat> <clears throat> 
and how we are using here in india here the remedies are pyrogen carbovig moxol lacasis camphora viratrum album in some cases antimony art antimony tart carbonium oxygenatum hydrocyanic acid and opium as well so through the entire series of eight sessions i am going to show you remedy by remedy and what are the indications and i am going to show you a few cases and how we have helped i want to tell you that um, when i am talking about these cases there are many cases where we have not been able to help as well what we are trying to create is a bit of a map and a bit of a awareness about homeopathic indications in today's times and how maybe all of you can can learn this apply this in helping more patients that's the reason for having this kind of a more uh, collaborative effort here the map that i've created is still under work i'm still trying to add some indication add certain uh, uh remedies in this map once i complete this map i will be sharing this map with all the participants who are watching this towards the end of the series so just wait for a few sessions and i will gift it to all of you so that you can apply it and and help more people i hope you can hear me okay and you can see me okay and you can see the powerpoint um if if everything is going okay the translation also going okay please write a yes on your webinar chat so i know that everything is okay <clears throat> all right sounds good so we will start today with the mild cases and what are the important remedies we all know these remedies but i am going to try to tell you some important clinical practically clinical observation that we have seen so that you can use it in your uh, around your area that's the idea so let's start with the first case this is a case of a 65 year old lady um we saw few months back uh covid 19 pneumonia all the cases that i am showing you are documented cases with investigation with reports and with the consensus of the patient my only request is that do not click pictures of the uh, patient's photograph because this is confidential literature and this is with a lot of respect for the patient
So this is a case who which we saw on 11th April 2021 CRP level uh, 27.2 she had fever for 6 days and um, then it improved and again she got fever for 4 uh, days ago again and this is her investigative report you can see here hrct on 4th april and you can see opacities in the posterior segment of lower lobe and also left upper lobe so she had this fever for 10 12 odd days typically the fever would come at night uh, particularly at 3:30 am and whole day there is no fever <clears throat> in fever the head pain is typically more on the forehead and a lot of sweat um now after fever but during the fever lot of headache that's a concomitant that with fever there is headache this is a very important aspect that you have to see that which stage is there fever chill or sweat and when you know which stage is prominent you need to know out of three stages which stage came first which stage came later on and uh, what are the concomitant symptom in each stage so what are the symptoms in heat what are the symptoms in chill what is the symptoms in sweat so in fever like we spoke there is a lot of uh, headache lot of pain in the forehead region and lot of sweat on the neck lot of chills chills begin from the limbs and uh, felt in the external throat chest face wants the covering during chill lot of thirst and mouth remains dry then we study further and uh, she was uh, once she became positive after that her symptom were that nose used to get blocked typically the root of the right side of the nose this is important which side is affected so right sided nose was obstructed and uh, she had to sleep on her abdomen so that the nose obstruction would improve
and watery discharge from the nose uh, typically ear pain also and right sided ear pain so you can see a little right sided a uh, symptomatology that you can observe here as she was getting lot of fever and uh, this nose block she was not able to say anything further so here i want to tell you that in these cases many many cases there are only physical symptoms you have to prescribe on physical symptom don't make the mistake of prescribing on a very strange mind symptom or a strange dream in this type of acute be very practical and solid in your approach <clears throat> all right so this is the case in short i told you about the investigative report that we did and um, even the uh, ct value you could see was uh, coming very high the you could see a covid positive all reports investigation so in this case what could be the choice of remedy and why in in your thoughts you can write on the chat So there are some suggestions here. Erica says belladonna. Justinian says mark protoiod. Corina says belladonna. Elena says blata. Many many suggestions. Okay. So no problem. In these cases, be very solid. you should know what are the main symptoms in the case so yeah many people are suggesting very very strange remedies this is a fever since around 7 to 10 days very mild symptoms it cannot be a very strange remedy like um sambucus or something like that so simple rubrics let's let's look at the rubrics so what are the rubrics chill beginning in the limbs a uh, fever periodical thirst frequent with mouth dry and uh, forehead concomitant with fever and sweat after fever and the main remedy that comes with maximum points is bryonia
so bryonia 200 in india we use c potency so bryonia 200 uh two times a day for five days that's my suggestion so within first day only uh, bryonia helped a lot and uh, just the thought of bryonia bryonia is helping majority of cases here especially in the initial stage uh, where there are very mild symptoms so it's a top remedy uh, that every homeopath should know everywhere so with bryonia uh, <clears throat> so with bryonia uh, remarkably uh, the patient felt better the dryness uh, improved so for the general symptoms improved the dryness improved the, there was desire for uh, warm uh, the cough improved as well no fever at all appetite improved thirst improved and oxygen level remained to 97 98 at the end of 7 days uh, patient completely better uh, no fever no cough um, sqo2 level uh, remained uh, fairly high patient felt completely better and the reports just within 7 days um, of giving the medicine and at the end of about 15 days we did the investigation it came negative with the scan so let's learn a little bit about bryonia bryonia comes in cucurbitaceae family i am going to everyone knows bryonia but i am going to tell you just four or five clinically most relevant symptom that you will see in the current situation <clears throat> so one of the most important things um uh, in prodrome so before the fever starts bryonia often feels very thirsty will start getting vertigo and headache these three would be the prodromal symptoms in almost every case of bryonia uh the heat stage will be very prominent in bryonia you know in every type of uh, remedy a particular stage may be predominating like in camphor the chill is predominating similarly in bryonia the heat stage is more predominant so uh in during the heat stage there ha- there will be very often in bryonia cough headache vertigo and desire to uncover so bryonia patient very rarely would want covering they want to uncover this is very important differentiation between 
Bryonia and China. China wants covering. This is how you differentiate. um very often and and this is a this is if there is no thirst with dryness of mouth it can very rarely be bryonia remember every bryonia in this stage will have dryness and desire to drink water and especially cold water or soups they also want lot of soups this is what i have seen the other thing that i have often seen in little little um, another stage of bryonia is, is once the cough start the bryonia patient starts getting a little stitching pain in the chest this could be because maybe the pleural uh, layer around the chest around the lung may be affected so this stitching pain is a very important symptom in bryonia <clears throat> uh they want to be in a quiet and very comfortable situation and comfortable zone so this is about bryonia bryonia doesn't want to move because they want to be in comfort they don't want to move because they want a comforting kind of situation and almost every bryonia that you will see typically will have a rotatory vertigo with fever so you also need to check that blood pressure chill typically begins in the lips very often and in the tips of the finger so uh this is a very important you have to ask where does the chill begin from so chill begin from tip of the fingers and toes this is very important for bryonia gelsemium natrum you so this is more or less about uh, the summary um more than anything else the heat stage is very prominent a little later uh, the chest can get affected the joints can get affected and always it's a very gradual onset you will see in the next remedy i talk that is belladonna the fever starts in no time but in bryonia it will start it will take 2 3 4 days for it to actually start so this is a very important thing so as you know i am trying to follow this map while teaching where um, i'm going to teach you step by step every remedy and a particular case about that remedy and clinical experience about these remedies so you can use it um a little bit uh, we can all learn together and try to use it so i'm going to take one remedy one by one
so we'll talk about belladonna belladonna top remedy in acute belongs to solanaceae family one of the first things you will see in belladonna remember this number one belladonna when you touch the external skin it will be hot to touch and the forehead will be hot and the feet will be cold this will be a main keynote that you will see in belladonna belladonna along with this heat interestingly is comparatively thirstless compared to bryonia aconite or arsenic belladonna typically is thirstless or very less thirst one of the differentiation between bryonia and belladonna is belladonna wants covering during the fever chill stage while bryonia wants to uncover so this is how you can have very minor differentiation uh typically belladonna and almost all remedies of solanaceae have dryness of the throat not of only of mouth but throat this is a very important genius of solanaceae family physical genius <clears throat> typically sweat on covered parts and uh, tongue right? tongue is very important i forgot to tell you in bryonia bryonia has a coated tongue interestingly and belladonna has a more red tongue little bit like uh, also uh, you can compare it with apis or streptococcus food can often taste salty in uh, belladonna and solanaceae family so yes they have a desire for lemonade draft aggravates But typically belladonna you know the difference between belladonna and bryonia also is bryonia becomes a little dull while belladonna will always you will always find a little activity in them and heat stage is very prominent and as you know the suddenness this is more or less the genius of belladonna we come to the next remedy next top so i uh, this might look a little bit more basic to you but we'll go step by step and we'll build up 
so that we know more rarer remedies a little later but first the most common medicines that you should know step by step through the map that's my idea to tell you <clears throat> we come to aconite aconite napellus belongs to ranunculaceae family so aconite is a remedy uh, you would probably give within 6 to 12 hours of of some kind of an exciting factor whether draft of air or air condition or going outside or some weather change or emotions and suddenly there is a cough or dry dry cough or fever that's the you give aconite as the first remedy and uh, there is a sudden onset as you already know in aconite but it's very important that at this stage of aconite you really cannot make any diagnosis you don't know uh, what system is affected but you only know exciting factor and you want to give aconite probably in 30 or 200 as a first dose um very often we have seen aconite the cough and during the cough the left side of the chest starts paining and um, there is dryness and left side of the chest starts paining this is typically within the first 36 hours generally 200 would be one of the best potencies to start but if you see the mind state is very prominent as you know aconite is restless anxious um, very excitable uh, you can think about that 1m as well as you know aconite is, is belong to ranunculaceae family so uh, as you know ranunculaceae family has lot of psychosomatic effects and slightest emotions can often uh, cause a deeper impact and cause fever so that's why that could be there could be a strong emotional factor there could be a fight in the house and the patient gets fever think about aconite <clears throat> next we talk about ferum fos um very underrated remedy 
but i have used it uh, in in these times and some interesting results the thing is that uh, belladonna you know has a dry heat all over the body typically or on the forehead but in ferrum fall it is localized flushes you know there could be a flush in the hand there could be a flush in the feet and patient is chilly but still localized flushes this is a very interesting kind of a complexity of symptoms uh it is said that ferrum fos is between bel bel belladonna and gelsemium so maybe uh, it it kind of doesn't actually have the activity and the kind of intense heat of belladonna and doesn't have the dullness and the drowsiness of gelsemium it's somewhere in between so it's very often ferrum fos is a clinical prescription uh, in your as, as a homeopath belladonna can have a swollen tongue and very very sorry a ferrum fos can have a swollen tongue and a red tongue a more red it's one of the first remedies when there is a cough and there is a slight kind of reddish tinge of blood in the cough first remedy ferrum fos 200 keep it in your mind there could be a early morning aggravation typically a 4 to 6 am sweaty palms and desire to stretch in the chills in old people there can be incontinence of urine due to weakness of sphincter with this fever think about ferrum fos then one more symptom i have seen ferrum fos there could be slight joint pain starting along with fever think about ferrum fos then so so i hope you are you are getting a little bit of idea about some remedies and i will i will tell you um one more um remedy one more case and maybe you can find the remedy of of this patient hopefully so this is a case of a 65 year old uh, male patient and uh, he was um, it was a suspect a uh, case of uh, covid this was a few months back
and um, as you could see in the hrct there was a core ad phi score you could see 9 is to 25 opacities were seen in the bilateral lower and upper lobes of the lung let's see if you can find the remedy for this patient so 65 year old male patient a uh, fever since 7 days a fever typically coming in the evening only uh, after waking from sleep uh, every day almost a uh, temperature goes till about 100 uh, fever typically with uh, heat and sweat and feels a lot of feverish within uh, when experienced bitter taste in the mouth since fever has started the appetite has reduced thirst has reduced um the spo2 was 94 it came to uh, 88 um this is the situation clinically i already told you the situation on the hrct uh, the upper lobe the lower lobe and the crown glass opacity is almost 70% in the lower lobe it is 8% uh, the oxygen is going um uh, the spo2 is uh, the blood pressure 110 by 70 pulse fever uh, majorly with heat and sweat a fever typically comes in the evening i told you or after getting up uh, from the sleep a more heat is felt on the forehead and uh, there is a lot of heaviness in the head experienced no thirst at all a um, lot of desire for warm food eats fast although wants to have coriander want some kind of a tasty food you know want stimulating kind of food typically um sleep is very less even during fever sleep is one of the issues sweat typically on the forehead so you have to understand this is the acute presenting totality and our prescription has to be based on this acute present totality if we make the mistake of prescribing only on the mind state we will miss the acute presenting totality now i am taking the history from the relative of the patient who is also homeopath and giving me the patient's chronic picture 
of the mind state because right now he is not in a state to tell his current mind state so we are now going back into history and trying to understand what is his mind state in general this can often help us differentiate one remedy from another even in the acute <laughs> so about his mind state he is very fault finding very very critical um sometimes censorious as well generally very honest he doesn't like to lie does things very very fast but is very obstinate and egoistic by nature also he can get angry very easily if things are not proper or not doesn't go his way he is he is quite sensitive and he can get angry they've already been given bryonia gelsemium so very often before coming to see me um, patients have already taken homeopathic remedies so you have to be more sharper in that way so one of the first thing when i look at this is i try to put my totality in solid symptoms and what are the solid symptoms in this case are related to the fever they are mainly concomitants of fever like the bitter taste like the cough and so on in this type of cases you can use any repertory but the repertory which has which is help me a lot most in fever and which are having concomitant symptom is what is called as boger bonning was and characteristics repertory i hope some of you <clears throat> i hope some of you have got the chance to read my new book on repertory it's called as art of repertorization where i have tried to explain eight different type of repertories boger bonning house and kent fatak so if you get a chance do read it and um, i'll hope that some of you will be able to read it
the books i think are now available in in uh, romania and um, also uh, ferens is helping us in hungary also so anyone would be interested you can write to us we will try to uh, find a way to give you the books so by using boger bonning os and repertory which i have used here let's see what is the analysis and let's see what uh, remedy comes up you can see step by step the rubric fever partial heat forehead fever begin with heat then sweat fever time evening you see periodicity is the main thing about china <clears throat> the main difference between china and nakshomika in acute i will teach you number 1 nux is very very thirsty in the acute that's the first keynote remember you can see china is thirstless and nakshomika is thirsty you you this is a very important symptom remember this nak swamika lycopodium could become his chronic remedy but in the acute stage china is the remedy so fever concomitant taste bitter fever concomitant dryness of mouth fever concomitant no desire to have food fever concomitant thirstless fever concomitant sleepless and then the mind symptoms so it's china <laughs> and i have given china 200 four pills plus i have also added whenever the in all cases of mine since last few months in any cases where i feel that the spo2 may go down we are using aspidosperma whenever needed this is a remedy it's also called as corbaco <laughs> you can give this remedy along with the indicated remedy and this remedy aspidosperma can be used whenever we feel the oxygen level goes down in today's time this is a very important remedy and we are using it 
especially with the indicated remedy with with quite a, a positive results yes squarbacco or aspidosperma is called the digitalis of the lung and it is one of the only remedies written in boric where it's written it is a remedy which can increase the oxidation and can stimulate respiratory centers very important remedy think about using this remedy very important so we have given uh, china and aspidosperma and within 24 hours uh, the patient state improved the fever the breathlessness improved the spo2 level without oxygen uh, has improved gradually on the on the second day and we have continuing the same remedy and along with that aspidosperma the spo2 without oxygen has reached 96 blood pressure pulse improve the generality is gradually start improving every day And you can see your step by step how the fever spo2 everything improved without additional oxygen and the within fifth day we had a discharge and uh, we are able to help the patient we even check the patient now he's totally fine and in fact he also gave us a nice testimonial uh, unfortunately i'm not playing up the video but he did very well uh, very positively well still keeping on doing well interesting no interesting to see that with help of homeopathy we are able to we are able to help. We don't have to say big, big things that homeopathy can do this or that. But at least in a very humble way, wherever we can, just we can add homeopathy and keep helping patient. We don't have to go tom tom over it. Let's understand this remedy. I want to tell you, uh, this is one of the most used remedy by me in the initial stage. And I believe this is an important remedy we are missing. We are talking about Synchona officinalis and the first remedy of homeopathy. Mm.
So one of the most important thing about China, which I have seen, and I'm going to tell you just most important things. If you if you get this, you give it. Number one, periodicity. Almost every China, every fever I ask, is it periodic or no? If it's periodic, China salts. China, China, China salt very important. very often one of the symptom is chill begins from the chest or from the limbs these two are the beginning points of chills for china and china in chills or heat want covering if they don't want covering it can't be china remember <clears throat> <clears throat> either the appetite is increased too much or appetite is reduced too much during fever this is china and craving for stimulants you know china is rubiaceae family mind is very very active wants for tasty tasty thing so they want tangy things they want tea they want coffee they want stimulating things <clears throat> <clears throat> bitter taste in the mouth during fever during chill and uh, heat bitter taste in the mouth remember three remedies bryonia arsenic china but specially china in the morning bitter taste of eating even bread and even sweet taste bitter lot of bitterness very often along with before during or after fever or chills china may have diarrhea or may have vomiting and thirstless i repeat thirstless during fever and chill put it in your brain china is thirstless this is a very important key note <laughs> i want to tell you about china today i will try to tell you look at this symptom given by bogar just just remember this number 1 sleepless as a prodrome so china will often get sleeplessness before getting fever china often gets thirst between the stages so chill then thirst heat then thirst so they do not feel thirsty during chill and heat this is a very important thing about china <clears throat> and lot of sweat at night look at it is written in capital china gets sweats at night if you see a patient who gets sweats typically periodically at night in fever think about china
and how is the mind of china makes many plans so plans makes many many ideas so mind is very very active hello claudia china and sinkona is the same china is another remedy another name for sinkona sinkona is the official name for china so it's the same relax one of the main symptoms of china we are seeing in today's time is they feel oh i am totally tormented unfortunate why is this happening to me and because of this my work is hindered because of this covid malaria dengue this fever my work is hindered this is the keynote of mind state of china in fact the dreams of china very peculiar you know patients even in the covid or non covid will tell that you know i get many many dreams and in the dreams i am doing this and i am doing that and i can clearly remember the dream so vivid dream very very vivid dream it's china and china always appetite can either increase too much or reduce too much in fever remember this so so i hope that uh, today we spoke about bryonia belladonna aconite uh ferrum fos and china we spoke five remedies i hope you got a main idea about these remedies so you all have a homework all these five remedies you have to read from allen's fever there is a book called as allen's therapeutics of fever you have to read it from nm choudhury you have to read it from burik all these three books you have to read and then you have to write a summary you are all going to write your own materia medica so you have to write a summary of each remedies five remedies and once you do that you have to write an email to me about what did you learn the most you can write it in uh, in hungarian or romanian i will translate it don't worry <laughs> and uh, today is monday you have to send it to me before friday that is within 3 days okay and and this is what it is it's going to be a training i want all of you to work hard okay <clears throat>
i'm going to teach you step by step this entire map with almost more than 40 remedies and um, we will we will learn together we will share together and we will grow together and help many people together let's do it so 5 minutes to go i keep it open for question and answers whatever i can answer you i will try to answer so go for it first question should we give aspidosperma in 6 aspidosperma works better in in 6 but you can give it in any potency but i prefer 6 <clears throat> some more questions will it work in mother tincture i don't know i haven't used it i prefer for 6c some more questions i am i am open to towards hungarian romanian questions slovakian questions english questions go on parinita can ferrum phos be given in uh, biochemic form yes if indicated indication should be there don't give it blindly if there are indications give it okay there is a question in which language you will have to translate it for me um okay or we will do one thing maybe the questions can be uh, sent to us uh, maybe uh, maybe sent to uh, us beforehand and we will answer those questions next time especially in hungarian and romanian so that they can translate it and help us translate or you will have to write you will have to translate google translate it and put it on the chat for me to directly read it where is this china the big powerless and vital fluid loss yes in in china there is lot of um, there is a lot of weakness exhaustion the right word is pumped out feeling in china but it can be there in different different cases in some cases it may not be there but weakness is a key note there is one more question uh, okay thirst is a very important symptom yes you should know which remedy is thirsty which remedy is thirstless tongue all, all these are very important pointers in acute did you give china 200 c every 6 hourly two times a day that is that means morning evening
it was not a case of belladonna elizabeth it was a case of bryonia okay in china case what is the reason behind mixing chronic mental emotional characteristics i wanted to see if the patient mind state is also of china which was not and that's why after china he may require another remedy in the chronic state so there is a acute state and a chronic state maybe in acute the remedy may be different chronic remedy may be different or in some case the acute chronic may require same remedy so you have to analyze <laughs> <clears throat> the duration of cure uh, dolly it depends from case to case cure is not the word right word to use in today's times let's say we can help reduce suffering of the patient why was nose block and sleep on abdomen not taken in bryonia nose block was a is a was a very common symptom and sleep on abdomen wasn't a very intense symptom in the case <clears throat> okay what is the dosage in ferrum falls or uh, you can use in 30 potency maybe 6 hourly if indicated if the symptom is only little cough without fever which remedies there can be many remedies there are i i will i will teach you all the different remedies there one of the remedies is bromium you know bromium has no fever inspiration causing coughing in uh, aggravated by hot this is a very important remedy on the other hand hiparsal very chilly slightest cold air causes cough so there are many remedies shruti how important is thermals it's very important in acutes in acute thermals is more important than chronic state which means that bromium is hot it cannot be chilly hipar is chilly it cannot be hot in the acute <clears throat> so i think that's about it from us um uh, if you have more questions you can write to us you can write to ferens or erizabeth or me and we will we will make a list and answer you next time so we are more uh, uh, working on this aspect um today is the first session i want to tell you um uh, yeah we are going to have eight sessions every monday same time i am looking forward to have all of you i want to thank uh, ferens thank you ferens thank you erizabeth it's not possible with, without you and uh, erizabeth and ferens and i want to thank dr yash who's on the back end team helping us dr utsav 
Dr. Dr. Shristi, Dr. Jaya, all of you, thank you so much uh, to make this happen. We are doing this so that all of you can help your patients. Yes, yes, you're looking handsome. Dr. Utsav is also there. We can't see him. It's good to see all of you. Okay, so we have Dr. Yes, Dr. Utsav. These are the people who are helping us make this happen along with Ferenc and Elizabeth. Thank you so much. More questions. Keep your questions. Email us. But do the homework. I want all of you to do the homework. See you again next Monday. Thank you so much. Namaste from India.